unstable power grids, planned shutdown of electrical power, or even blackouts. How can we prepare our homes and home automation systems against such events? In part 1 we protected our homes against short outages. Today we will protect them against longer outages. I will focus on my PV, but also show how you could use an ordinary emergency generator. Gritty YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Remember, if you subscribe, you will always sit in the first row. According to my definition, long outages last longer than a few minutes. For shorter outages, we used a UPS. Frequent viewers know that I built a 9 kW peak PV on our roof and a Huawei Sun 2000 inverter, including a Luna 2000 10 kWh battery in the basement. When we ordered, the battery was financially not attractive because of the low electricity prices. After February 24th, things changed and I did something I never thought I would do. I ordered a so-called backup box. Why? As shown in video number 438, a typical PV has to stop producing power when the grid is off. So your house is without power even if your battery is fully charged and the sun shines. This is also the case with my Sun 2000 inverter. Not what we want in these times, right? To solve this problem, you can buy specialized inverters that automatically disconnect the grid and start to supply the home in off-grid mode on all phases. Or you buy a so-called AC battery. Often you need a backup box that switches the grid off and starts the off-grid mode of the battery. Both solutions are expensive and sometimes even complicated because they include devices from different suppliers. If you watched my last video, you know that I hate complicatedness. And like most of us, I want to spend my money to create a quality of life. This is why I went with the inexpensive and simple Huawei inverter. In addition to its regular inverter job on three phases, it manages the battery to maximize our profit. And it offers off-grid supply on one phase. It also needs a backup box to interrupt the grid and switch the inverter to off-grid. As we will later see, this is the cheapest possibility I found to fulfill my wishes. But it needs some hacking. No problem, we are makers, right? The backup box provides three main functions. As soon as the grid is off, it interrupts the connection from the grid to the inverter. The inverter automatically switches off because it senses no grid. The backup box has two breakers in series to be sure. This is what utility companies want. As soon as this interruption is confirmed, it starts the inverter in off-grid mode. And finally, it connects phase one of the inverter to a backup load outlet. This outlet is intended to supply all critical loads like the freezers. Function one and two are fine with me. Function three is not acceptable because of the following reasons. One freezer is built in in the kitchen. I would have to run a cable to the backup load outlet in the basement. As shown before, not only a cooled beer is essential, also a working internet is a must. That would be the next cable from my lab to the backup load outlet. Our heating works with wood, but it needs electricity for the brain and the pump. A third cable would be needed for this system. And finally, having light in all rooms and maybe even a working TV would get me many points from my wife, which can be exchanged in situations where I forget to do my household duties. With a single phase outlet of the Sun 2000, this is impossible because consumers are equally distributed across all three phases. And some high power devices are connected to all three phases in parallel. Major problems. But as usual on this channel, we want more. Fortunately, my son Julian knows a lot about electrical installations. When we sat together, he proposed a simple solution. 
During off-grid operation, we short-circuit phases 2 and 3 to phase 1. Sounds like a horrible idea, right? Let me explain why it could work. Most of the loads are only connected to one phase and ground. They do not care about which phase they are connected to. Only our stove and the oven are connected to all three phases. Is this a problem? Such utilities can be connected in star or delta configuration. Star is similar to the single phase constellation and will work for all resistive loads. It will not work for old motors because they need a rotating field. Delta is different. Because the loads are connected between the phases, they will not be powered because all phases are connected and have the same potential. So the loads should not be harmed. All in all, all loads except the stove and the oven should work and no device should be destroyed. Excellent! Now we have to find the correct wiring diagram. This is relatively simple because during off-grid operation the inverter is disconnected from the grid. In this state it can be compared to an emergency generator running on fuel. So we can install such an automatic transfer switch to switch the load from the grid to the emergency generator and back. The rest of the installation stays the same. This is the diagram. The transfer switch is connected to the load, the grid and the backup power outlet. Phase 1 of the backup power outlet is connected to all three phases of the transfer switch. We could manually switch the load from the grid to the backup power outlet. But we want more. For an automatic failover, we connect source A to phase 1 of the grid and source B to the backup load outlet. Position 1 is chosen if source A or both sources are powered. Here the load is powered by the grid. Only if the grid is off and the inverter supplies backup power, it switches to position B, where the house gets the energy from the backup load outlet. Exactly as planned. The installation of the backup box was done by professionals because do-it-yourself is not allowed in fuse boxes. Because it was already late, the electricians went away before the test. So it is up to me. Here I can switch the grid entirely off. What do you think will happen? Did we consider everything? Is the wiring correct? I'm pretty confident with low voltages, but here I'm nervous. Also because I know that we will not get a new inverter for a long time if I destroy it. But there is no other possibility. I have to take responsibility. Now I try to switch off the house power which is coming from the top here. 3, 2, 1, 0. Ah, and back again. I have now emergency power. What happened? I disconnected the grid with the switch. All lights went off because the house had no power, except the devices powered by the UPS, of course. Immediately afterward, the backup box insulated the inverter and sent its off-grid start signal. The yellow LEDs started to blink while it powered on. The backup power outlet got power and with it source B. Now the automatic transfer switch disconnected the load from the grid and connected it to the backup load outlet. The lights went on and the entire house had power again. The stove and the oven survived and the Eaton UPS protected the network and the PC during this short time. Cool! So the battery backup works. But what about the solar panels? As we see here, they still worked and supplied the home. And other than Huawei communicates, the battery is charged with the excess power from the roof. How cool is that? Compare it with other solutions offered to you. You know now what questions you have to ask. And what is the price of the inverter, the battery and the backup box? A total of 6,000 Swiss francs or $6,500 or euros. Of course, this does not include the smaller parts and the work. Not bad, I think. 
Keep in mind, I live in Switzerland where everything is expensive. The UPS was less than 150, by the way. This project was not simple because it involved unknowns and some head scratching. To protect my network and the PC against short outages, I installed the UPS. For the long time backup using my PV and its battery, I had to buy a backup box and hire professionals to mount it between the fuse box and the inverter. The Sun 2000 inverter is only capable of providing power to one phase and the backup box only offers an independent backup load outlet. This is not what I wanted. I wanted to power as much of the house as possible. With the help of my son, we found a simple solution. A transfer switch switches the load between the grid and the backup box. By connecting all three phases to the backup load outlet, we can get most of the consumers in our house powered from the inverter. Only the oven and the stove do not work because they use three phases. But they are also not harmed. And I purchased a small gas cooker for emergencies. The Sun 2000 inverter can deliver up to 3.3 kV ampere in off-grid mode. The house without cooking and washing consumes less than 2 kW. So plenty of power. As the cherry on top of the cake, the Sun 2000 inverter uses the available sun to power the home and even charges the battery while in off-grid mode. More than Huawei promised. For a price of $6,500 for the parts alone. I'm happy with my solution. And now, after my prototype is running, my neighbor will get the same. One last thing. The Shelly sensors got a new place. Here they measure only the power going to the consumers. If you remember, the inverter has no way to measure this value and has to calculate it. These calculations sometimes contain artificial peaks. With the new position of the Shelly current transformers, these peaks are gone. This was all for today. As always, you find the relevant links in the description. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. Thank you. Bye.